Just about six months ago, we started this NBA season. A lot of historical moments and breakout teams along the way. And that is all going to play a part here on today's video. We're going to be handing out some NBA awards from MVP to most improved player to all NBA teams, right? We're covering it all here on today's video. So if that interests you, drop a like, subscribe to the channel. Let's get into it. Starting off here with the MVP award. And for every single award, I'm going to be doing what I think is going to happen. But of course, I'll give you my personal picks along the way. And my personal pick for MVP is at the number two spot, believe it or not. But at number three, we're going to have Luka Doncic, Luka Magic. This dude is just amazing. Uh, I think as of right now, they're, they're, they're surging up the rankings. I think they're fourth or fifth in the Western Conference. The Western Conference is so incredibly tough this year uh, compared to every other division. I saw a stat that said the Warriors at the 10th seed in the West are closer to the one seed in the West than the two seed is in the East compared to the Celtics absolutely crazy how stacked the west is this season however luka Doncic has been everything for the dallas mavericks averaging his 30 point triple double leading the league in scoring there's not enough you can say about luka Doncic, but i think these top two guys just with their team success and being that these top two guys are also the lead guy in their team it's kind of hard to give luka the award over these guys just because they've had a little bit more team success and number two though is my personal pick for mvp it is shea gojus alexander Partially for the reason that, and you know, we've seen Jokic win the award a couple times already. And of course, Shea leading the youngest team in basketball to 53 plus wins at the moment. And they're currently still fighting for the number one seed in the Western Conference. It, it's just unprecedented how, how amazing Shea has been this season. Averaging 31 a game with 31, 8 and 8, something crazy along those lines. But Shea has been the guy for the youngest team in basketball. And of course, they're still fighting for that number one seed. It's just, you don't see that often, right? Uh, Shea is such a special player, and I think, for the simple fact, maybe it's just voters' fatigue. Uh, maybe I, I would give my personal vote to a guy like Shea Gilgis Alexander. At number one, Nikola Jokic, though, of course, it, you just watch him, and, and it's just, he's different. He's just different compared to these other superstars. It, there, there's a region why he's widely considered, the, at this point in time, the best player in basketball. Of course, uh, in a couple months after the postseason, I'm sure if he doesn't win at all, we'll say, hey, it, X player is, uh, you know, far and away the best player in the league but Jokic for the last four years this would be his third in four years as far as the MVP award he's just been amazing again triple double machine he is the offense for this team and his defense goes underrated you know I think he's he's a lot better of a defender than people give him credit for now he's not the Rudy Gobert's of the world of course but Jokic does hold his own especially in the postseason and I think in the postseason given their home court advantage given how well this team has been built around Jokic all Jokic needs to do is be himself, and this team looks like they're going to win back-to-back -back titles, uh, which uh, hasn't been done since those Warriors uh, teams, excuse me. Uh, but those are my top three, of course. A sleeper pick I want to throw out there. Again, not a guy that is going to win the award, uh, but a guy that I think definitely has gone under the radar this year, and he deserves some flowers, it is a guy like DeMontis Sabonis. Call me crazy. I know they've been slipping down the rankings, uh, but this is a guy that when you watch him, he has been everything for the Sacramento Kings this year. They've lost a lot, and De'Aaron Fox is not playing at the same level as he was, at, uh, you know, this time last year. But DeMontis Sabonis is an honorable mention I want to throw out there. Of course, there's some other guys like Anthony Edwards. Of course, Jason Tatum leading the best team in basketball. Basketball, excuse me. Uh, right? Uh, Giannis, of course, for his impact on both sides of the ball. There's a lot of honorable mentions, but my biggest one, again, a guy that's not going to be top five in the rankings, but I want to show some love to, is DeMonte Sabonis, so shout out to him. For the Defensive Player of the Year, uh, Giannis barely missed this list, and again, that's partially because Doc Rivers kind of took over, right? <laughs> uh, whether if it was Adrian Giffen or Doc Rivers, the defense has taken a step back there in Milwaukee. Otherwise, Giannis, as an individual player and his individual uh, talent on that side of the ball, Giannis is probably going to, you know, he, he would win this award every single year. Uh, however, he missed my list because I want to show these three guys just a little bit more love here for the award show. Bam Adebayo, though, again, the guy that has been the backbone of this Miami Heat defense, and they're one of the best defenses in basketball because of it. I mean, that's a big reason why this team is even, you know, a seven seed at the moment, uh, fighting, of course, for a higher seed. But Bam's the reason why they've been to this point. Of course, there was a stretch of games where Jimmy missed earlier in the season. He stepped up a lot offensively this year. I'll, I'll throw that out there as well, but defensively really we know that's where bam has always uh, hung his hat right Derek white again a guy that uh, we saw a couple years ago when marcus smart won it he reopened the door 
for these guards and these wings to win this award yet again. And Derek White, to me, is a guy that, again, I could go Drew Holiday. I think he's a little bit better of a defender uh, individually, right, talent-wise. But Derek White has just been a, 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 such a good player for the for the Boston Celtics this year. Again, they're far and away the best record team in the NBA, period. They have the third best net rating in NBA history, which I think that goes under the radar. And, you know, it might change my mind as far as do I really want to consider them, you know, you know, NBA finals contenders uh, going into the postseason because we know their history uh, where they get there and they just can't get over the hump. But again, this team has been so great on both ends. And Derek White has been the unsung hero of this team. And of course, I want to show him some flowers, especially where he hangs his hat, which is on the defensive side of the court, always taking the tough matchups, always giving the opposing team's best player a difficult time. Now, again, some players are so great, they're still going to get you your 25 and 30 points. But Derek White makes it a living hell on that side of the court. So shout out to Derek White again. Uh, you know, he definitely deserves his flowers for what he does for the Boston Celtics. Uh, because, of course, they have some other guys on that team where, you know, he kind of goes unnoticed. But for the Defensive Player of the Year winner, I will. I do think it will end up being Rudy Gobert. And I think that'll be my personal pick as well. Uh, simply for the fact that uh, this guy, you know, has been, he's the reason why this Timberwolves team was the number one defense they might have fell off, but I know for 75, 80% of the season, they've been the number one defense in the league. And Rudy Gobert, I think, obviously is the defensive anchor on that Timberwolves unit. Uh, they have some other talented defenders as well. Mike Conley goes unnoticed. Anthony Edwards puts in some effort, uh, but also Jaden Daniels or Jaden McDaniels, excuse me. Uh, that That's a guy I love. I love Jaden McDaniels at the midseason mark. I had Jaden McDaniels as a top three guy in this award. Uh, but of course, that guy has been amazing. An honorable mention, a guy that has not played nearly the amount of games, but just as of late, the last month or so, he's just been absolutely crazy. Uh, Jonathan Isaac for the Orlando Magic. That guy only plays eight to 10 minute stretches, but when he does, that dude gives you Russell Westbrook energy, 110 miles an hour. Uh, but of course, when he's on the court, Jonathan Isaac is amazing defensively. But Rudy Gobert, of course, is the leader of the number one defense in basketball. They're top three seed in the Western Conference. And uh, I, I think it's very interesting as far as Gobert because we know he won three of the Defensive Player of the Year awards in uh, Utah. I think, you know, just with voters fatigue, we've seen in the past where once you kind of hit three in a certain award, you don't really win it again, uh, at least in recent memory. Uh, so I, I think if, if Rudy Gobert had this level of a season in Utah, and let's say they're, you know, middle of the pack in the West, I don't think he wins this award. But so, uh, for the fact that he, he's on a new team now, and he's now doing it yet again, where he's leading the number one defense in basketball, I think that's a big reason why he's going to take home his fourth Defensive Player of the Year, tying Ben Wallace and Dikembe Mutombo uh, for all-time uh, history uh, as far as how many times they've won the award. So those are my top three. But again, there's some other guys like John Isaac and Giannis and, and of course, some other guys. Jared Allen deserves some love. I mean, Joel Embiid when he's healthy. There's a lot of guys around the league, but uh, those are going to be my top three. Moving over to the Rookie of the Year, and there was nobody on draft night that felt more criticism and, and received more criticism than a guy like Brandon Miller, but shout out to him. He's been on a tear, especially as of late. The win column hasn't been there, but again, that's that has nothing to do with the NBA Rookie of the Year award. But for me, Brandon Miller, again, uh, this is a guy I put a parlay on uh, the other night to get 20 points in the game, and that was, of course, the game where he had 24 points in the first quarter uh, going 9-9 nine nine shooting. But again, uh, he, he's, you know, he's made the, the doubters take their words back, and he is proving why, hey, I was worth the number two overall pick. And hey, I can be the 1A or 1B guy for this Charlotte Hornets team going forward. Uh, it's just amazing the strides that he's taken this year, especially in the second half of the season. And Brandon Miller definitely, for the second half of the year, gets a top three spot for me. Other than that, I think if it was a first half award, I, I gave it to Jaime Jaquez at the midseason mark at the number three spot. But of course, that number three, Brandon Miller, uh, is going to get it for the, how great he's been the last month or two of, of the NBA season. But at number one and number two, you know who it's going to be. It's going to be Vic or it's going to be Chet. But I think uh, the second half of the season is really, it hasn't made it an argument. Chet has been great in his own right. And you could also have the conversation, is Chet even a rookie? Of course, there's a video somewhere on the channel if you scroll down. Uh, Bakari, he, one of my co-hosts, he was on the channel when we had that debate. Is Chet really a rookie? Should he even be you know, considered for this award? And if, if he is, who should win the award? 
Uh, but we're sitting here today, and, and of course, the second half of the season with the record after record, historical performance after another. Victor Webanyama has, has run away with this award despite his team success being almost flipped from Chet Holmgren. Uh, but again, Chet Holmgren has had an amazing season in his official first year. And uh, uh, and again, just you know, being the second best player on you know one of the best teams in the NBA definitely shouldn't go unnoticed. But I think Victor Webanyama has done more uh, for the San Antonio Spurs as far as uh, you know what we've seen on the court. And I think if Victor Webanyama is not there, then that Spurs team might have went on a bigger losing streak than the Detroit Pistons. But Victor Webanyama is going to take home my NBA Rookie of the Year, and of course. Uh, I think that's good for the NBA publicity, right? If seven foot four phenom uh, taking home the award. For the most improved player, uh, you know, there's a lot of different players you can go for this award. Uh, but for me, I'm going to go with the guy in Jalen Johnson at number three. Of course, he had a great first half of the season. Trey Young went down. His numbers went down a little bit as well. Uh, but Jalen Johnson overall from start to finish gives you effort on both sides of the courts, uh, you know, at you know, a great rate, of course. Uh, but he's just been a really good player for the Atlanta Hawks here this year. One of the well, one of the few steady pieces for them. And of course, when times were dim and and they were like and they were saying, "Hey, Dejounte is almost a guarantee to be gone at the deadline." Jalen Johnson started to play some of his best basketball. Uh, but then, of course, some things happened, and Dejounte ended up staying, and Trey got hurt. But one of their one of the most steady heartbeats for this team all year has been Jalen Johnson, and I think he has a very bright future. There in Atlanta, he gets my number three uh, vote here. And number two, Kobe White. Of course, this is a guy that took a jump up, I think, 10-plus points this year. Uh, but regardless, he's been a really, really solid player for the Chicago Bulls. And, and of course, he's been, again, uh, that kind of Zach Levine replacement for them because Zach Levine, uh, obviously, he was a bit of a diva this year. And, of course, he's unhappy with the situation. And Zach Levine has played his last basketball as a Chicago Bull. So he moved on. But this year, they've gotten that extra, that, that second scoring punch from this team has not come from Nikola Vucevic, even though he's been solid in his own right. But it's come from Kobe White, a guy that is just, he's just now having his best season of his career, what, six, seven years into it. Uh, but regardless, he's finally here. He's finally showing why, hey, you got to keep me long term because I can be a very solid addition to this roster. Uh, but again, there's no, you know, I don't know what Kobe White's future looks like because a lot can shake up this offseason in Chicago. But as of right now, I think the most approved player, he deserves his flowers. And again, in any other year, he would be the clear runaway front runner to win this award but Tyrese Maxey has been Tyrese Maxey again last night shows it again 46 points hits a clutch shot takes them to overtime against the San Antonio Spurs uh, Tyrese Maxey has been nothing short of amazing uh, this entire season and again a guy like Tyrese Maxey uh, is one of those guys that should be you know a most improved player uh, guy, right? We shouldn't be seeing the John Morant win the award like he did, uh, uh, what, two or three years ago. We should be seeing guys that are not lottery picks that have to work their way up from the rotation and eventually be the guy for their team win this award. And that's why I have a guy like Tyrese Maxey taking it home. I think he's averaging like 26 a game. Uh, just absolutely insane. But again, Kobe White, Jalen Johnson, any other year, they're probably winning this award. But Tyrese Maxey has just been on a different level. And the Sixers are scary yet again here, especially with Joel L's return. For the sixth man of the year, again, a lot of different options you can go with. But I'm going to be a bit of a homer here, and I don't think there's another Cavalier on this entire video. So I had to get one in there. And Karis LeVert's one of my favorite players, uh, a guy that I've been rooting for since he was in Brooklyn. Of course, wearing 22 and killing it there next to D'Lo. Uh, one of the funnest teams I've ever watched, uh, by the way. But Karis LeVert, I've been cheering for him his entire career, and he's on the Cavaliers. And this year... Of course, the scoring output's been there, but the biggest improvements I've seen this year from Karis LeVert has been his playmaking ability, has taken a big step up, right? A guy that's been known as a shot chucker, has been, he's been facilitating a lot more this year, especially in the absences of Donovan Mitchell. But Karis LeVert, his defense has gotten better, uh, his shot selection has gotten a little bit better, uh, but also just the biggest thing is his playmaking. Uh, I've seen a lot of improvements from Karis LeVert, and again, the Cavs, even though they haven't looked great really the last month or so, they're still a top three seed here in the Eastern Conference, or if not top four. And uh, of course, Karis LeVert played a big part with all the injuries. 
At number two, Malik Monk, again, just for the individual efforts that he's brought to the Sacramento Kings. They lost a lot of depth, but Malik Monk has been there, and he's been that third guy for uh, the Sacramento Kings next to uh, uh, De'Aaron Fox and DeMonta Sabonis. You know, some nights Keegan Murray's not hitting the shots, and that's where Malik Monk can really put them over the top. I think this team can be scary if they get a matchup favorable in the first round. Of course, if they match up with, let's say, the Oklahoma City Thunder, I think the Thunder don't have a big rebounder. Of course, they struggle as a team rebounding the ball. You have some bonus to do that. If De'Aaron Fox can channel into his playoff performances from last year and, and be back to what he was last year, uh, I think this team could be in a very uh, competitive series. But I think the X factors, and we talked about that last Tuesday, are Keegan Murray and Malik Monk. Of course, this team lost depth. However, you need Malik Monk to go out there and get you a 15 to 20 a night to really give you a chance to make it far and make it interesting here in the postseason. But as far as the regular season, Malik Monk has been very solid, giving you about 15 to 20 a night. But at number one, we're going to show some love to the Minnesota Timberwolves yet again. Nas Reed, man. Nas Reed is not only does he have one of the most interesting followings and, and you know, <laughs> the fan groups out there. But Niles Reed has just been such an amazing player, a guy that goes under, uh, I guess, uh, underappreciated for what he can do with the basketball. A lot of guys just see him as a, hey, he's a traditional, you know, he's, he's going to catch a lob and he's going to rebound and give some defensive effort, uh, defensive effort rather. But this is a guy that can shoot. He can put the ball on the floor. He can sometimes play make with the basketball. Uh, and, and of course, he has a little bit of a bag to him as well as far as getting his shots, uh, getting to where he wants on the court and getting his shot off. But Nas Reed's been really uh, an underrated player here for one of the, I guess as of today, they're the number one seed in the Western Conference. And I just think it goes unnoticed. He's played a huge part in the absence of Carl Anthony Towns. And uh, I, I think as long as he hasn't played enough games in the starting lineup, I, I think Nas Reed should take home the six man of the year award. I think he just deserves it a lot more than these other guys as far as who's under him. Uh, for the NBA Coach of the Year award, Joe Mazzulla takes it home for the simple fact that, again, third best net rating in the history of the NBA. They have the best record in the NBA by far. I think they're, what, 61 and 16? Something absolutely insane. Uh, but at number two, Chris Finch, of course, coach of the Timberwolves. A lot of people had him missing the playoffs. And again, like I mentioned, they're the number one seed in the Western Conference, the most stacked Western Conference we've seen in over a decade. So Chris Finch deserves his flowers, especially with the injuries to one of his star guys like Carl Anthony Towns. Jamal Mosley, again, a guy that's leading a very, very young Orlando Magic team. Again, not only do they have the best theme song in the NBA, but they got a pretty good coach as well. Jamal Mosley has been the catalyst for why this team has been so shocking this year. And again, I had him making the playoffs, but I didn't think they would look this good. I thought they'd maybe be a play-in team to make it into the playoffs, but they're a four seed, I think a four or five seed. They're going to be uh, able to avoid the play-in and they're going to be a scary first round matchup in the first round, especially if they can finally start to knock down the three ball, something they've struggled with all season. But uh, these three, of course, and then also uh, Dejanat, Mark Dejanet, uh, however you say his last name, right? Uh, for the Oklahoma City Thunder, he's also a very, very great candidate. Uh, but again, I, I just threw these three names on there. It's really a four-coach uh, four race uh, between Finch, Mosley, Missoula, and uh, Dejanat for uh, Dejanat. Well, how, again, however you say it, for the Oklahoma City Thunder. Uh, if you're an uh, OKC Thunder fan, please let me know how you say it. Uh, but all four of those coaches are really, uh, I'm not going to be mad at you if you go either way. And then we get to the all NBA teams. We're going to finish off here with the all NBA first team, second team, third team. And then we'll talk about some defensive teams as well. Uh, for the all NBA first team, again, Luka Doncic, Shea Gilgis, Alexander are both guys that were top three in the MVP race. Of course, rightfully so, they're here on the first team. Uh, and then you see the front court here. You see Jason Tatum, Giannis. And Nikola Jokic, Jason Tatum, of course, uh, a guy that was, if, if he wasn't top three, he's number four on my MVP list. Jokic, of course, won the MVP in, in my, uh, of course, rankings uh, or in my list here today. So rightfully so, you see the top three guys and you see Jason Tatum and Giannis. Uh, probably the top five MVP candidates are on your screen on the left side of it. So uh, shout out to those guys, right? But Anthony Edwards has a case. Of course, there's some other guys here that might shock you on my second team and third team. But really, as long as your first team looks like this, uh, I, I think there shouldn't be really arguments as far as how the other teams look. 
But on my second team here, Jalen Brunson, of course, he's been everything for the New York Knicks, having an amazing season. And I think he legitimately has an argument now to being the best guard in the Eastern Conference. And yes, that includes guys like Donovan Mitchell. That includes guys like, uh, uh, excuse me, Damian Lillard, right? Uh, Jalen Brunson has an argument. He's in the running. He's been everything for the for the Knicks. And when you watch him, it's it's so frustrating watching him because he's so good and he just always makes the right play. Uh, but Jalen Brunson has been playing on a different level this season. Shout out to him. But for Anthony Edwards, he's the leader of the number one team in, in, team in the Western Conference, a team that's dealt with a lot of injuries and a team that nobody had expectations for going into the year, but they're the number one seed. And that is because of Anthony Edwards. Edwards, not only is he handing out nightly posters, but of course he's carrying your team to a lot of wins. Anthony Edwards, I cannot wait to see who they get to play in the first round of the playoffs, simply for the fact that Anthony Edwards has been one of the greatest playoff performers we've ever seen, let alone in the NBA today, right? But moving over to the front court, LeBron James, Kevin Durant, and DeMontis Sabonis. Yes, DeMontis Sabonis is here for the simple fact that he's just been everything for the Kings and I cannot say how how much uh, how great he is and that might be a hot take you might say hey Zion or, or Paolo Bancharo uh, I don't know why I said his name so funny uh, but or Anthony Davis one of these guys could deserve a spot over DeMontis Sabonis maybe Rudy Gobert but I think DeMontis Sabonis he's just so great he's so underrated and, and this is a guy that again this is where personal preference comes into it I would have him on my second team over some of those guys I just mentioned. But for LeBron James and Kevin Durant, I mean, they just, de they defeat father time. It doesn't matter how old they get. LeBron James just surpassed 40,000 points this year. And of course, uh, he, he's been on a different level. And I mean, hey, the, the Lakers have been getting hot lately. Right now, I think they're only a half a game away from being, you know, from avoiding the play-in. So the Lakers, you know, even though there's been a lot of questions this year about how bad they've been, they could avoid the play-in. And then if they avoid the play-in, they're going to be such a dangerous team in the first couple rounds. But then you have Kevin Durant. He's been the best player on the Phoenix Suns all season. And in those moments where Devin Booker went down or, Brad, or Bradley Buell, he, he never really played. But when he did, you know, when he, when he wasn't there, Kevin Durant was always the steady player for this team. And, and uh, I know they have a tough schedule to close out the year. I'm interested to see if they fall into the play-in or not. But Kevin Durant has still been Kevin Durant. And that's my argument for LeBron and Kevin Durant. They're themselves. Uh, but moving over to the third team, uh, Steph Curry. You know, Steph Curry, even though his team is the 10th seed, uh, 10th seed excuse me, and they haven't won a lot of games, just when you watch the team, if this team didn't have Steph Curry, this team would be there at the bottom of the conference, especially with how guys like Clay have taken a step back. Well, maybe not as late. Uh, but again, early in the year, Clay was not the same person. Draymond obviously is not a great offensive uh, player uh, as far as scoring the basketball. So Steph Curry, all of the pressure has been on his shoulders. I didn't even mention, you know, guys like uh, Andrew Wiggins has taken a step back. Their second best offensive player on some nights has been Pajemski, right? Brandon Pajemski uh, there, uh, you know, the first year rookie. But Steph Curry and, and then Kawhi Leonard, of course, First healthy season in a long time. I'm happy to see it for Kawhi. And again, I, I, he's actually going to qualify for all of these awards this season. And I have him on my third team. Again, you can have Kawhi Leonard on your second team or third team. Uh, I, I, I think, obviously, I would give it to LeBron over Kawhi Leonard. And that is the reason why Kawhi is my third team. But again, he's going to get an All-NBA spot, no doubt about it. For the bottom three, I'm going to go with Paolo Banchero, leading one of the best young teams in basketball to a, a, a top five seed in the Eastern Conference. It's not easy, and Paolo has been doing it without three-point shooting around him. So Paolo Banchero, such an amazing season, and he's one of my favorite players in the NBA. Zion Williamson, talk about a resurgence. Talk about changing the narrative around your career. Zion has been on a different level the, uh, the second half of the season with the injuries to Brandon Ingram. And, of course, uh, C.J. McCollum, you know, being their secondary guy, I, he, Zion Williamson has been amazing. And again, he doesn't have a deep bag. His recipe for success is I'm going to put my body into yours and I'm going to move you and I'm going to dunk or I'm going to lay the ball up every single time I come down the court. And it works for him. Uh, this guy has been amazing this year. Just a pure dominant force. And I think he's earned a uh, an All-NBA third team selection. Uh, now, again, if this team was still hot as they were and they haven't been on such of a slate as of late, uh, no rhyme intended, 
Uh, this, you know, he could have an argument for being second team in the NBA because at one point they were the four seed in the Western Conference. So you can make an argument, hey, the Pelicans, you know, Zion should be all NBA second team, but they've started to fall down as of late. And of course, uh, the, it's kind of hard to beat those forwards there on the second team, right? LeBron, KD, and Sabonis. And then Anthony Davis. You can have some other guys here. I know these all NBA teams are positionless this year. So Devin Booker is a great guy that could have made the list. Uh, there's some other guys I'm sure I'm forgetting. Damian Lillard, right, could have made the all NBA teams. But I went with Anthony Davis, right? Anthony Davis is still having his healthiest season as a Laker, and that's gone unnoticed. A guy that has qualified for awards when there's guys like Joel that haven't. Uh, but Anthony Davis, again, uh, has been such an amazing player for the Lakers this year. And again, the wins haven't been there. Uh, but when playoff time comes around, we know AD is going to bring it. We know LeBron's going to bring it. And we know the Lakers are going to be a force to be reckoned with. But Anthony Davis has been playing like that top 10, top 15 level player that we always known he could be. So shout out to AD. That, those are my all NBA teams. But then we talk about the defensive teams. I'm going to go with the backcourt of the Boston Celtics. Again, uh, I, I think if they're not number one, they're number two as far as defense in the NBA. And they have two of the best defensive guards in the NBA, period. And again, they're in the same backcourt on a nightly basis. It's so incredibly tough to face the Boston Celtics because they're so well constructed. And it all starts, again, the backbones of this team are not Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. It's not Chris Stapps. It's Drew Holiday and Derek White, because if they can shut down the other team's best player, again, these are two guys that can guard one through four legitimately in today's NBA. They can guard one through four. And if they can minimize the opposing team's best player's efforts, it's going to be so tough because even if Jalen Brown or Jason Tatum have an off night, they, you know, they, they still have the defense defense there that you just need one of those guys to take you over the top on a nightly basis. Uh, but Drew Holiday, Derek White, such amazing defenders, and they both get all NBA nods here for me uh, on my first team. For the front court here, we're going to go with Bam Adebayo, Rudy Gobert, of course, two guys that were in my top three running. Giannis definitely has a better argument than Victor Webb and Yama to be here on the first team for the simple fact that Giannis, even though the defense is taking a step back, Giannis should be here because his team's won 30 more games this year or, or something along that note. However, I'm going to play into the narrative and, you know, I just want to get fun here on these all NBA teams. Again, this is not what's going to happen in real life, but when Benyama, of course, most likely going to be a second team defender, but just, we haven't seen a defender like him in such a long time getting eight, nine blocks uh, on a nightly basis. It's just truly remarkable to watch. And uh, of course, Victor Webinyama, I'm going to give the all NBA nods to, at least for my defensive side of things on the first team. But you know, don't worry, Giannis is here on the second team, right? Uh, but then in the, the, the All-NBA defensive second team, we're going to go with Caruso and Josh Hart. But Jalen Suggs was super close. It really came down to, to Suggs, Caruso, and Hart. And I flip-flopped those three so many times before I got to the uh, finalist of this list. Or until I finalized this list, rather. Uh, but again, you can go with any combination of those three. And I'd be okay with it, right? But Alex Caruso, Josh Hart, and Jalen Suggs are those two are going to make up my backcourt, right? Or two of those three. But then we talk about the front court: Herb Jones, Jaden McDaniels, and Giannis Antetokounmpo. Not a lot to be said there. They're the number one defenders or number two defenders for their teams, especially when we go into the postseason. These are going to be the guys that this team relies on to, uh, you know, save them on that end of the floor, or at least command that end of the floor. Jaden McDaniels might be the only exception because he is not the best defender on his team. But again, as far as the perimeter, Jaden McDaniels is the best defender on the Minnesota Timberwolves. Uh, we could talk about rookie teams, but again, rookie teams are so subjective as far as team success and individual success. Uh, if you want an all NBA rookie first team for me, it's probably going to be, you know, Brandon Pajemski, right? For the Warriors, we're going to have Victor Webb and Yama, Brandon Miller, uh, uh, it's kind of hard. It's kind of hard to fill out the, the list. You know, Jame Hawkwiz definitely has a good argument. There's a lot of good guys you can throw on that all NBA first team. But again, it's all subjective at the end of the day, as far as when you talk about NBA rookies. And Chet Holmgren, of course, duh, uh, would, would close out that first team for me. Uh, so it'd be Brandon Pajemski, Brandon Miller, Jame Hawkwiz, Chet, and Vic. That would be my first team if you are, you know, if you wanted it. But episode 159 in the books, it's absolutely crazy to say the journey of this podcast, starting it, you know, just in a college dorm and we're here 
Uh, and on Thursday, we're going to hit 160 episodes. I, I can't thank you guys enough for all the support throughout this entire time. But before I get out of here, let me know what you guys think. Of course, if you enjoy, drop a like, subscribe. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I get back to every comment as quickly as I possibly can, uh, which is typically in five or so minutes. I'm always on my phone. Uh, but let me know who are your awards? Who do you have taking home each award? But until Thursday, stay happy, stay healthy. Get out of here.